I'm Dr. Michael Latola. And I'm Megan Strong. Welcome back to the first Chairside Live of 2014. Retail marijuana has been legalized in Colorado, and a Colorado dentist, coincidentally, pulls his own tooth out and places an implant on Facebook. And now the French have a smart toothbrush for your smartphone. And we've got the MP Awards for you. That's right, the most questionable impression of 2013. That and more on today's Chairside Live. Hey now, hello and welcome to episode 82 of Chairside Live 82. The year I graduated from high school, uh, the year REO Speedwagon taught us you can tune a piano, but you can't tune a fish. 1982, five years before you were born. Look at that. So you missed out on all that fun stuff. Oops. We had interesting things like uh, TV specials called The Day After, where they told us the whole world was going to be blown up by the Russians, where they bombed like Kansas. Now it's the Mayans. So. And, <laughs> exactly. The, the world's always going to end one way or another. It sure is. But this is our first show of 2014. I haven't seen you for about a month how were your holidays? They were really good. You know, I was excited to spend time with family and friends, and um, it was nice to have a little break from work. But I'm excited to be back, and I've missed Chairside Live, so I'm happy. Well, it's here for you again. Thank you. It's back. And it's back with a vengeance, Whoa. I might add. In fact, our case of the week today is not just a regular case of the week. I looked back over 2013, and I noticed that a lot of people were doing, like, award shows, different mm -hmm. sports shows and stuff like that. And so we have our own little awards today. Uh, we have the questionable impression of the year for 2013. Uh, in shorthand, we call it the MP Awards for the impression of the year. But it's not the good one. It's kind of a questionable one. So let's go ahead and take a look at that now. Well, this is it, Megan, the big here day. The impies are finally here. Dentists all over the country have been taking questionable impressions all year long in hopes of making it onto this very select list. How many nominees do we have today? We have five nominees, and we wanted to take this to a special location that was, mm -hmm. you know, in film on location at a fancy place like Chili's, but we're here, so this will have to do. This will have to do. But we have, have five nominees. All right, very good. Who's the first nominee? Up. Uh, First, we have Dr. F. from Cincinnati, Ohio. Dr. F. from Cincinnati, Ohio. Let's take a look at this impression. Well, when you look at it at first glance, uh, patient's got a wisdom tooth. He did manage to get a wisdom tooth in the uh, impression tray, which is nice, but it looks like there's a big pull on the lingual as we look a little bit closer here. And uh, we can see as, as we look closer that there's just, it looks like a huge channel mm -hmm. of uh, either saliva or blood. I'm going to go with blood. Uh, came rushing out of here because I just don't see why there'd be that much saliva there. But it looks like a dam where the wall broke mm -hmm. and we just have liquid kind of spilling out. Here's a shot from the other side and you can see that there's kind of a margin along here and then everything uh, just stops. And when you look at the tooth in front of it, it's always amazing to me just how good our impression materials are. I mean, look at the detail on that. That looks Crazy. like um, just like the, a ridge, a mountain ridge on the surface Sierra of the Nevada. moon. Or the Sierra <laughs> Nevadas, exactly. And so these impression materials work so well on every other tooth except the one for where we prep it. And that is one of the things that's difficult when you get gingiva that's kind of bleeding. So that's uh, nominee number one. Who's our second nominee for well, an MP? Our second nominee, we've seen his work before. This is Dr. H from Miami, Florida. Ah, I believe he won most questionable partial denture last year. He's back at it. And he's back at it again. Let's take a look at uh, this impression. Oh, now see, here's not one where we have a wisdom tooth. And it's not contained in the impression. It's actually biting down on the tray itself. And that, that makes it a little difficult for this impression to work. But when we look a little bit closer, we can just see that there's extra material kind of hanging off here, unclear margins, big divots in the margin itself. And as we look even closer, just, again, a huge void right at the margin. I, I know you're a non-dentist, Megan, but you've heard us talk about this enough time. Uh -huh. If you don't take care of the tissue and it starts to bleed, these impression materials will not work, will not set well. They'll get pushed out of the way by the blood, and you can see this is a really good example from that. Who's next? Well, third nominee, we've got Dr. B from sunny San Diego, California. Sunny San Diego, California, America's finest city. Perfect weather. Not America's finest impression. Whoops. When you look at this, you can see two bicuspids have been prepped in this double arch tray. And both look a little indistinct. And when we get a little even closer to this, you can see where it looks like a, it looks like extra material was just kind of added on at the end on, on that tooth, for example. Uh, we've got a little tear back here, not the end of the world. But again, just not a lot of detail, even as we come along. There's these white speckles here. It looks like it was almost coated with confectioner's sugar at the end of it, maybe to tell the... Uh, 
uh, technician to go, be sweet with okay. this impression or something like that. I'm not sure <laughs> what that is. Maybe it's it. latex. Hard to see, but you can really see what a mess this impression is right along here. That's going to be a really difficult one, Dr. B. Who's next? All right. Well, we've got our fourth nominee, who is Dr. K from Chicago, Illinois. Dr. K. Let's take a look at what Dr. K did. Now, this is some uh, anterior preps, as you can see on the front. And as we look at it again, it looks pretty indistinct. You can see some rough outlines of what appear to be teeth, <laughs> some kind of round <laughs> mm -hmm. prep-like looking shapes. And if we go in a little bit closer, I'm not sure there was any retraction cord here that was used, or I'm not sure there was any kind of diode laser that was used. I'm not sure what was used. It, in fact, I'm not even sure the teeth were necessarily prepped. They just look like there was an impression taken of some uh, tiny teeth. And if we uh, flip that impression over and, and look at it towards the lingual, you can see that we really don't have much definition there as well. But now at least I can tell they're preps because I can see some of the diamond marks that are in here. But this one had to be sent back pretty quickly. Uh, this one tooth, you can almost make out you know, the margins and where the tooth is, but the rest of that is, is kind of sloppy. Who is our uh, final nominee for the Impies this well, year? Well, we had bonus points actually for Dr. K because he used Lakers colors. But then our fifth nominee is Dr. P from Atlanta, Georgia. From Hot Atlanta. And this one's really confusing because when you look at this impression, it's got some really sharp angles on it. Mm -hmm. and, and you can tell there's, there's no patient whose mouth actually looks like this. It looks like it's a polyvinyl impression of... A model you know with that has a base formed on it and you can see this 90 degree angle and how smooth it is right there and so you go well wait a minute this wasn't taken in a human mouth yet it appears to be an impression of a human molar but it's got this big kind of band around that that kind of looks like the margin but it's not the margins that thin line uh, down below it and so as you look at it from multiple angles it's really tough to figure out what happened apparently the doctor took uh, an impression of a model, but yet he relined it with light body material. I'm not sure if that, it doesn't look to be like it was done in the mouth. It looks like it was done on a model. Frankly, it's, it's really confusing and I'm not sure uh, what to make at it. It's just, it, it really is kind of crazy when you look at it and see exactly yeah. what's going on. So really a bumper crop of questionable impressions this year. A good and show this year. A difficult one to kind of figure out, uh, but I'm going to have to go. I've had a chance to, uh, to look at we them need a drum roll. in detail and go ahead and give me the drum roll. Okay. <laughs> Keep going. I'm not done. Still decide. A little more. A little more. Stretch it out. Stretch it out. The winner is Dr. K from Chicago. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yes, we will be sending you a... Um, Reverse preparation kit, <laughs> but really that's re that, that may or may not necessarily uh, actually kind of help. So um, we did pick a couple impressions here that were at the far end of the bell curve of not looking very good. Mm -hmm. I have to say that going through 2013, a lot of the impressions that we looked at were actually taken very well. Nice. And as a laboratory, when you look at our remake rate, it was lower in 2013, the remake rate from Dennis sending stuff uh -huh. back to us, than it was in 2012. And it has continued mm. to get lower as time goes on. And you know why? Why? Monolithic restorations. Emacs, uh, Bruxer, both these materials have lower remakes uh, than PFMs ever did. Sure. And so as more dentists kind of hop on board with these monolithic restorations, we see the remake rates going down. And the biggest lesson of all that and the biggest benefit of mm -hmm. all that is that the patients who are sitting in the chair and the dentist tries in the crown, there's a much better chance than it's going to fit today mm -hmm. and, and a much better chance than the patient's going to get that permanent crown cemented today and not have to come back, not have to take Ooh. another half day off work. So anytime we can do something, whether it's in technique, sure. whether it's prepping, impression, or materials like going to a monolithic material, anything that will reduce the remake rate is always a huge benefit That's right. for the patient themselves. So congratulations yeah. to all the nominees and uh, go ahead and get your engines ready. Start taking some impressions for the 2014 MPs. We have any viewer mail this week? We do. This week's viewer mail comes to us from Dr. Brad Miller from New Jersey, and he writes, Dear Dr. Detola, I hope you are well. I have a question, and I figured I'd email you directly. My offices are currently looking to purchase one of the digital scanning systems so that we can get into the world of digital impressions. Good for you. Right now, another lab is offering to subsidize the Itero scanner if we guarantee to send them a certain amount of business each month. I have grown quite fond of Glidewell over the last year, and I would much rather have a partnership with your lab. However, I'm not sure if you offer any sort of arrangement like this. 
please let me know if Glidewell offers any sort of partnership like this or please direct me to someone whom I could speak with. Thank you very much for your time. P.S. I love Terrorside Live and I never miss an episode. Ah, that's nice of Brad to say. Hey, Brad, thank you for emailing me directly so Megan could read it to me. I appreciate that. Um, we actually don't have an arrangement like that with any of the digital impression manufacturers. What we decided to do instead, here was our fear. Our fear was um, we get together with somebody, whoever it might be, and you start using it, and then you're not happy uh, with the device or not happy with an update, or another system gets a huge update, and now you're stuck with this one that doesn't have that update, and now you're not all that happy with it, and you want to switch, and but we're making these payments on it. It actually just seemed to us like when we look back at the history of labs doing stuff like this that it could tend to complicate the relationship. And so what we wanted to do was reward anybody using any digital impression system. And so um, anytime somebody sends us a digital impression, they get $20 off the restoration. So if it's an Emacs crown or a Bruxer crown that retail for $99, anybody who sends us a digital impression gets it for $79. So in essence, we're kind of helping to make the payment on that by giving you $20 off, if you will on every Emacs or any modelist restoration, but typically Emacs or Brux or restorations, $20 off per restoration, which will help you on that payment. Now, of course, that only helps if you are using us as a laboratory, and like you said, you've grown to like Glidewell. So uh, if you were to invest in one of these systems, uh, every time you would send us a unit with that, you would save $20 on what you were normally paying with us. And so we felt that was a better way to kind of not get in the middle between you and whoever the digital impression manufacturer might happen to be. And so that was kind of our solution to this to allow you to uh, choose whatever system you wanted to go with without us going, well, there's this one that we recommend or there's this one that we make that we really think you should go with and kind of force that on you as well. So it really leaves the option uh, up to you. And because anytime you send us a digital impression, we don't have to pour the model, we don't have to section it, we don't have to put the base, we don't have to put on the articulating uh, hinge on the back, all that stuff, that saves us $20. And so we pass that savings on to you. Also, we're not gonna, you're not gonna have to ship it to us via FedEx like most dentists do with conventional impressions, which saves you another $7. Uh, because it's going to be electronically transmitted to us and then shipped back to you, of course, in a physical box. So you really end up saving, when you look at it, $27 per unit. So that's been our solution. We don't have a partnership, but we allow you to hopefully encourage you to work with any di digital impression system you want to and still reward you for saving us all that time and effort. So thanks so much for writing in. Brad, thanks so much for watching every yes, week. Really appreciate that. And what does Brad win? Well, for being the letter of the week. If you've been watching the news, you know that there's been... I have been, not. Oh, okay. but go ahead. There's been some severe cold. I did see that. Yes, okay. So in honor of that, how about a burr kit? <laughs> See what I did That's there? Good. See what I, I did I there. I did see what you yeah. did. That's the one that we were going to send to Dr. K, the winner of the Impies. But let's be honest, I don't think he's going to use it. Let's give it to Brad okay, instead. Okay, sounds good. It's and a also, burr kit. That sounds like something Dairy Queen would do. I'm sorry. Uh, B R R R R. I just couldn't resist. You know um, what their motto is? What? Hot eats, cool treats. Wow. Thank you. Okay, it's also called the Grill and Chill. Why do I know that? Because I. Dairy Queen is? <laughs> yes. Oh, I didn't know that. The Grill and Chill. Because they have. Um, this horribly processed fake stuff, but it's um, a cherry dipped cone mm -hmm. and it's got like that hard shell or whatever. Oh, it's so good. But anyways, that's why I know it's called the that's, grill and It's chill. not as good as the peanut buster parfait. Listen, do if we're going to get down that? to our fake dairy desserts, right? I'm going to go for the peanut buster parfait. Okay. I think they do. Okay. Anyways, because Brad is such a fan too, yes. how about this lovely photograph? That's a horrible picture of me. You do that all the time. I never do that. Okay, wow. Anyways, we're going to sign this and send it on your way. Thanks, Brad. Yeah, thank Appreciate you, Appreciate that. All right, so we'll get the uh, burr kit. On. I'm never going to be able to think of the word burr kit I'm again. I'm sorry. Without. You've ruined You're it welcome. for me. Thanks so much. Yeah. Any news this week? Yes. We have featured some pretty unique tooth removal methods here on Chairside Live. Some involve dogs and strings, but this one might be the most impressive of all. A Colorado dentist wants to put his patients at ease when it comes to extractions, so he removed his own number 10 himself. Armed with a video camera, a mirror, and two assistants, he made a seven-minute video, a step-by-step -step account of him self-injecting the anesthetic, calmly removing the tooth, and then inserting the implant. You can watch the video on his Facebook page at www.facebook.com slash Dr. Dan Hatch. Ah, Colorado, the home state of producer James. It is. Um, 
the timing of this, before or after the legalization of retail sales of marijuana? Do we know? <laughs> we don't. Same I'm day, not maybe? Sure. Later it that day? It might be a direct I event feel from like that. he kind of stole my idea. And it okay. really wasn't my idea. It was my dad's idea. My dad, as you know, is a retired dentist. He is. Uh, grew up and practiced in the age before YouTube and always said that he wanted to take out his own wisdom teeth uh, on film and then release it. But... You know, there's a difference between having a great intention like that one right. and actually following through like Dr. Dan did mm -hmm. in doing that. So that's fantastic. Cheers to you, Dan. Yeah. Uh, congratulations on getting that out there. <laughs> that is pretty awesome. Listen, I, and I watched the video, and um, as a copywriter here at Glidewell, I go through and I edit and write for our magazines. And so I'm used to clinical videos and clinical photos where there's blood and gore and whatever. And there wasn't much blood and gore at all in this. Of course, he's not trying to scare his patients. Um, but I had a, I kind of had a hard time watching it because I mean there he is like drilling himself and I'm just thinking, I mean so many things could go wrong. But props to him, he did it and it's it's rather impressive. So I encourage you to go to his Facebook page and check it out. Right, I had a patient the other day needs an extraction and an implant, uh, can't afford it right now. Mm -hmm. I sent him to the Facebook page to watch it. I think right. this is going to spawn some copycats, some patients <laughs> doing it on their own. I don't and know I, about I that. I applaud that. Okay. I applaud that. This is the next Jackass movie being filmed right now, like a dental version of it. Oh, my gosh. Anything else? Yes. A French company has debuted a new electronic toothbrush that acts like your mother. The toothbrush tells users how well they are brushing their teeth via a smartphone app. Every brushing is recorded, and the data lets the user know if they have brushed long enough and if they have cleaned those hard-to-reach places. The brush is connected via Bluetooth to a smartphone with the app. The app can keep track of multiple users. The brush head is replaceable, but the battery is not, but it should last for about two years. They are hoping to obtain funding through the crowdfunding website Kickstarter, with hopes to start selling the product online and in stores in Europe and the U.S. during the fourth quarter. Now, when you said it was a toothbrush that's like my mother, I thought you meant it drank too much and told me I was never good enough. Mm -hmm. But you, that you're actually saying that what it does is constantly reminds you uh, of if you've done a good job or not. How does this actually work? How, do you understand how the technology works of how it knows? it sends the data, however, to like through via Bluetooth right. to the phone. And so then, I mean, I guess it's telling like maybe where you brushed or how long you, I know it says how long you brushed for. Um, so if you get in there and do five seconds, it's going to be like, okay, you had about a minute and 55 seconds to go, you know. Um, does it know specific areas that you miss? Like if you forget to go on the lingual, does, I mean, I wonder if there's like a motion sensor where it knows when it's being I'm flipped over. I'm not sure. It didn't have lingual. like very specific, specific information about it yet um, because it's still kind of in, I guess, the prototype stage since it's not out on the market. Um, but it seems interesting. I'd like to maybe try it out here. I feel like I just want to snap it right onto my iPhone and actually hold. I've got this thing in my hand all the time. I and if it did. had a little attachment like this, I could brush. And maybe it would show in, in detail. It could blow it up five, 6,000 times, and you could see actual bacteria running around Ew. on my teeth. i got to tell you a quick story about dental school. Okay. Uh, my roommate, and I don't want to mention any names because I don't want to embarrass Chuck, okay. uh, but when we were in dental school, um, it was a perio course, our very mm -hmm. first perio lecture. And they had this microscope up in the front. And they asked for a volunteer, and nobody volunteered. So they just, he pointed, the instructor pointed at the guy sitting next to me, which was my roommate. And, uh, and he went up to the front, and he took an explorer, like we uh -huh. use here to point at things, and went under his gum tissue mm -hmm. and back to the very last molar and got all this plaque off and then put it on a slide mm -hmm. and put it in this, I think it was like a phase contrast microscope or whatever sure. kind of microscope it was. And then up on the big screen, you could see all the bacteria and spirochetes that were in my roommate's Ew. mouth swimming around, and it, it grossed everybody out so much, and they were laughing so much that he, he wasn't crying, but he got up and ran out. <laughs> he was just so... <laughs> so damaged by this whole thing. That's and I've never forgot how awful that it was. Um, but that would be a great way for kids, you know, if you get to kids early enough and, right. and then humiliate them like that at no. their sixth grade class. I'm just. I think that mouthwash necessary. I'm that shows the color where they missed is enough. In the privacy the of their disclosing tablets, right? Yeah. In the privacy of their own home, they don't have to be embarrassed by their peers. I think that's child abuse. Stop it. I, he was an adult, but he acted that like a is, child. Okay, well. But he still, had some problems, I apparently. applaud anything, any kind of high tech solution that's going to get, hopefully, you know, more of the population to brush their teeth. Sure. I'm all in favor for, even if it sounds kind of goofy with the Bluetooth 
you know, wireless attachment we'll to the see. phone, and we'll see how it works. So yeah. let's uh, see if we can't get the first prototype here when it's mm -hmm. available. Test it out on you okay. right here on ShareSign Wonderful. Live. Well, that about wraps it up for our first edition back of 2014. On behalf of myself, Megan, the whole CSL crew, and everybody here at the lab, I want to thank you for your time and your continued commitment to quality dentistry. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, my God. I don't believe it. I, As a young impression sitting inside the cartridge unmixed, I never thought this would have happened. And, and to be honest, it's it's really just an honor enough for me to be nominated along with these other awful impressions. What company to be in? And uh, I would be remiss if I didn't think of blood and saliva. Without them, none of this would have been possible. And, and props to Dr. K for not using any retraction cord, not using a diode laser, not using Traxident or Expacel. And, and, and another shout out to the patient. Mark, uh, Mark, thank you so much for not flossing for 20 years. This could have never been possible without your, your horrible periodontal disease. And I'd like to thank my parents, a couple silicone blenders from Germany. Uh, I, I'd like to make the, uh, thank the uh, mixing tip that put me together with the catalyst over here. Couldn't it, are, you, are you playing me off? I've got more to say. Wait, stop. Stop, stop. I've got a very short shell life. I've only got about two weeks. Stop. You can tune a piano, but you can't tune a fish.